We believe in Jesus, no matter what people say to us. We believe that He's our Lord by His resurrection. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open heart to His resurrection and merciful love. Jesus has risen. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. Put your hands up. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. We believe in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and endless life. Every day we say to him, here I am, you count on me. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open hearts to His resurrection and merciful love. Jesus has risen. A blessed and pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 27th day of April. Mm -hmm. Just like that, April is almost finished. A few more days here. It is a beautiful day here in Dangriga. It's gray and overcast. Very, well, slightly angry looking sea. Wind blowing wonderfully over the east coming out of the east i do hope you're having a beautiful morning where you are and i'm sure you could hear the noisy little birds in my background that makes it all such a beauty to wake up to in the morning we're going to kick things off this beautiful thursday morning it is a thursday morning we're going to kick things off this beautiful thursday morning with one entitled e watchers and the holy ones let's have a listen
Dallas Cathedral. And you heard that organ in the background. I heard that organ in the background. My goodness, let me tell you, it was absolutely beautiful. We're going to continue with getting our words here up on screen then for today, April the 27th in 2023. And let's see if I could make that happen here in three, two, and one. There we go. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 2. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Prayer of Intent Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is canticle number 14, A Song of Penitence. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 55. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm for this morning is psalm number 37, and leading us in the reading of a psalm using a previously recorded version is Miss Yvonne Usher. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 37. Do not fret yourself because of evil doers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass and like the green grass fade away. 
Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take the light in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lonely shall possess the land. They will delight in the abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day will come. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who are upright in their ways. Their sword shall go through their hearts and their bow shall be broken. The little that the righteous has is better than great riches of the wicked. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We want to thank Miss Yvonne for leading us in the reading of Psalm 37. Our second canticle for this morning is the Song of Christ's Glory based on Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through to 11. And if you are following in your books of common prayer, we are on page 54. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the New Testament book of Luke, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through to 11. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Luke, chapter 5, reading from verse 1, 2 to 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you afford me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading here, it is one of the seaside experiences of Jesus. And it's a beautiful one. There it is. It is a beautiful one because it shows us the miraculous power of God through Jesus Christ over nature. And not just over any aspect of nature in this particular case, it is over the fish of the sea. And it's interesting because this is now Jesus calling his disciples to himself. He had already done so much in terms of his ministry with regards to healing and preaching and teaching. But now this is where he was beginning to call him his 12 to himself. And he told them to teach them from an interesting place. We are used to teaching being kind of like from a classroom. But in this instance, Jesus' classroom is going to be a boat. And Notice how the reading starts. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, yes, and the crowd was um, pressing on him. Interesting that the multitude pressed around him to hear the word of God. They had seen what he had been doing. And this large crowd showed the increasing popularity of Jesus as a teacher. The crowd was so big that Jesus had to leave the shore, get into a boat to be away from them and kind of created this strange pulpit. Na? And this lake of Genesaret is another name for the Sea of Galilee. And it is, um, it is one name that is not as familiar as the Sea of Galilee, but it's the same place. And sometimes it's even referred to in the Bible as the Sea of Tiberias. So now, Jesus gets into a boat, a boat that belonged to Simon Peter. And Simon must have felt privileged that Jesus wanted to teach from his boat. I mean, I would be. But we can also be sure that Simon was listening to this teaching more attentively since he was closer, right? I mean, the closer you are to the teacher, the more attention you're supposed to be paying anyhow. And Peter receives Jesus, yes, and follows his direction. You know what? After Jesus has finished teaching, he says to Peter, you know what? I want to do, kind of like he's saying, I want to do something good for you. But he says to Peter, go out further into the deep and let down your nets. No. He had lent Jesus his boat, but I'm sure he wasn't looking for any payment. But this was going to be a catch like he had never had before. And Peter could not give something to Jesus, apparently, without Jesus giving him something back. But as far as we can tell, Jesus was in the boat and he directed them. His presence gave them confidence, it seems. You know, and even so, Peter's response, typical Peter. Master, we have toiled all night and we catch nothing. You know? And it's interesting because after his resurrection, Jesus is going to have a similar thing, except they will be in the boat and he will be on the seashore. And Peter could have said, you know what? I work all night. I'm tired. I didn't catch anything. I know a lot more about fishing than you do, carpenter's son. The best fishing is at night, not in the daytime. All the crowds are too loud. Having heard your teaching, they will scare away the fish. It was saying that they had already washed their nets. Yes, he could have said, we don't put up the nets and wash them. You know, but Simon didn't do that. Simon was obedient. He did say, you know, we have tried all night and caught nothing, but yet at your word, I will let down the nets. And that showed Peter's great faith. It showed his trust in Jesus' word. It shows that the people, some of them anyhow, were already coming to respect and trust in Jesus. And it's interesting because when you consider at your word being the word of Jesus, which is also the word of God, at Jesus' word, at God's word, he divided light from darkness. At God's word, the waters from above and the waters from below were separated. At God's word, sun, moon, stars, planet came into being. At God's word, dry land gathered, water gathered the next place. At God's word, all creation came to life and is still held together and sustained by God's word. And it's interesting that Peter, having experienced the night before this no catch, would still agree that at God's word, he was going to follow. And that struck me. That struck me because how often are we willing to dive into, listen to, reflect upon, inwardly digest God's word and be guided by it. No, I know it don't apply to you because you are here every morning listening to God's word. Praise Jesus. I am thankful for that. 
But hearing God's word and being obedient to God's word and allowing God's word to work in and through our lives are different circumstances completely. You could read the Bible whole day and it makes no impact on you. If your heart and your mind is not in the right place to allow God's word to transform you. You could listen to God's word all day and take joy from it, but then not act upon his word and therefore not share his word with others. And it's interesting because Peter being willing to follow God's word in the person Jesus Christ here shows his great faith, shows his great obedience, but also showed to Jesus his willingness not just to listen to the word, but his willingness to proclaim the word. And of course, in obedience to Jesus, he believes God's word. If you say so, I'm going to let down my neck. And it was credited unto him as a blessing. He got the miraculous catch of fish. They caught a great number of fish. Peter didn't make such excuses and his faith was Jesus was well rewarded. Hmm? Peter understood that he probably knew more about fishing than this carpenter did and he had worked all night with no results. But he believed in Jesus, not because the circumstances seemed right, but because Jesus was Jesus, because he respected Jesus' authority. And the catch of fish was so big that they had to signal their partners in other boats to come and help them. And that for me strikes me too. Because the catch of fish was so big that they needed to get others to come and help them with the work to get the job done. And if we would only follow God's word and trust his guidance and where he leads, our catch might be so big that we need to call people to share in it. And you know what? They came and the nets were beginning to break because of the catch. And then Peter did something amazing. He fell down to his knees and bowing before Jesus says, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. He recognized. Hmm? And it's interesting because Jesus had already healed Peter's mother-in-law. We heard that yesterday. But yet there was something about this particular miracle, this particular blessed catch that made Peter worship Jesus and surrender himself to him. Depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord, said Peter. When Peter saw the great power of Jesus displayed in his knowledge of, of, of areas where he shouldn't have any knowledge, it made Peter realize his own spiritual bankruptcy compared to Jesus. Peter knew that Jesus was Lord. He knew that he was man and that he was a sinful man at that. And Peter allowed himself to move away from being a sinful man only to being a humble man. And it's interesting because it might seem better to us to pray, come closer to me, Lord, for I need you, I am a sinful man. Mm -mm. Peter didn't pray that. Peter said, Lord, go away from me. I do not deserve to be in your presence. I am a simple man. And it's interesting. Because Jesus didn't say, you're right. You're sinful. Jesus didn't say, it's true. I better than you. Jesus says to Peter, do not. Be afraid. And it calms the existing fear. Peter was afraid of Jesus in the sense that he had great awe for him. But Jesus told him, put away that fear. And it's the truth. God doesn't want us to see him as a God with lightning bolts waiting to strike down on you if you give trouble. God wants us to relate with him on a principle of love, not a principle of fear and hiding. Do not be afraid, he says to Peter, calming his fear. Whoops, calming his fear. He says to Peter, from now on, you will be catching people. And he was telling Simon Peter, from now on, you'll be joining me in this ministry. Because that's what Jesus was doing. He was out there catching people. And there was never a greater fisherman than Jesus himself. They would never be. He could catch the heart of people 
better than anyone else, but he still wanted others to do the work he did alongside him. He called them to partnership in his ministry. He still calls us to partnership in this ministry. And it's amazing because Jesus started with these three, Simon, James, and John. Hmm? And then with 12, and then with hundreds, and then with thousands. And by the time it gets to us, millions Millions are active in the ministry of proclaiming the glory of the kingdom of God today. Follow me. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And it's interesting. Because the response. When they had brought in their boats, the reading tells us. They left everything and followed him. And that... Seems to me like they even left the miraculous catch of fish behind. And they could have made big money off of this fish. Eight dollars a pound for fish now, you know. Big catch of fish. They would have made a lot of money. But the Bible puts it like this. They forsook all and followed him. Which means they left the miraculous catch behind. They left the possibility of making money behind. They left their life behind. Because it was not as important as what it showed them about Jesus. It showed them that he was much more than a mere man. That he was much more than just a simple carpenter. That he had to be something divine. That there was something special about him. And that acknowledgement is what caused them to follow him. They forsook all and followed him. And they followed him in a way that the student follows their teacher or rabbi in those days. And it's a beautiful thing. Because sometimes to partner in ministry with Christ, you're going to have to leave things behind. And it's not always going to be easy to leave things behind in order to follow behind Christ. And sometimes leaving things behind means leaving what is comfortable to walk into the unknown where we know the possibility of discomfort might exist. But yet the challenge is to follow. And while we might not physically be following behind Jesus the way these boys do, we are still called to follow the way of Christ. And notice, these fellows were fishermen. They were not preachers. They were not teachers. They probably were not highly educated beyond what they were. And the ministry started out with relatively untrained, possibly uneducated people. But Jesus taught them everything they needed to know. And their education and training came up more as an apprenticeship than a classroom model. Proving to us that he doesn't always call the equipped. But he always equips those whom he calls. And the comfort is there for us. Do not be afraid. Father, we pray that our eyes, our minds, our hearts will be open to your word. That we could be obedient to follow where you lead. And in following, that we may bring others to follow as well. Amen. We continue with the profession of our faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for today is the collet for the third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming works, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together let us say a collet for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. At this time we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Fallon Kane, Mrs. Tiffany Sweetin, Reverend Manuel Cruz, and Miss Julia Bailey. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll have a blessed and beautiful day, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Joyce. In our prayers, we continue to pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, and Miss Janet. We pray for Miss Kim, Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, and Miss Derla. We remember and pray for Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Altia, Miss Teresa, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, and Miss Amy. We pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvoreen, Miss Doreen, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Faith. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray. For Miss Verilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Isme, and Miss Anne. We remember and pray for Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, 
Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elba, Reverend Linda, Miss Carol, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Miss Nadia, Miss Sheila, Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Perla, and Michelle Madin. We remember and pray as well for Miss Zindi, Miss Suzette, and Miss Kimberly. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, and Mr. Gary. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Father Jerris, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., and Mr. Carlos. We pray for Mr. Levoy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, and Mr. Sean. We pray for Father Leroy, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Bishop Wright, Mr. Gustavo, Mr. David, Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Kieron, Mr. Grayson, Mr. Paul, and Mr. Chris. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember in our prayers this morning, the family of Mr. Fitzroy Airwood, the family of Mr. Horace Popper, the family of Miss Yolanda Hinkis, the family of Miss Leonora Zetina, the family of Mr. Clementino Perez, the family of Mr. Earl Lopez, and the family of Miss Ina Marie Goff. We remember as well the passing and pray for the families of Mr. Harry Belafonte and Mr. Winston Bell. For all those who are grieving, grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Elton, Ariane, Rihanna, Angel, and Garrett. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember all our nurses, our athletes, our wives, maids, our cooks, our cleaners, our pharmacists, our lab technicians. We remember our radiologists. We remember all our doctor specialists. We remember all our nurses. We remember all persons who work in the administrative sections as well as those who work in the security section. We remember and pray especially for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Arnold, Show Green, Ariaga, Ken, Arana, Ek, Lawrence, Joseph, Sosa, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Miss Alberta, Miss Gill, Miss Herrera, Nurse Ira, Nurse Orel, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We continue to remember and pray for persons who have contracted COVID-19. We remember all those who are in isolations of their various kinds, and we remember all those who care for persons in isolation. We continue to give Almighty God thanks for the availability of a vaccine, even as we continue to pray for a cure, the containment, and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. For persons who would have lost employment, persons' salaries that were reduced, we continue to pray for all those who are struggling financially to make ends meet. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, the most vulnerable in our society. We continue to pray for persons who have pre-existing health conditions. We remember those who are going for any type of surgeries this week or this weekend. We remember those who are recovering from surgeries. We remember and pray for persons who are suffering from autoimmune illnesses. 
those who are struggling with illnesses such as lupus, sickle cell, praying for those who are undergoing cancer treatment. We continue to remember and pray for all persons who are ill and for those who care for them. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for our Coast Guard, our Belize Defense Force, our police officers. We continue to remember and pray for the government, our Governor General, our Prime Minister, our Ambassadors, the Leader of the Opposition, the Ministers of Parliament, all our public servants, especially those who have to travel for reason of getting to work, and for all persons in position of public trust and authority. We continue to pray for the churches and the church leadership. We remember and pray for the private sector and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic, those affected by the ravages of war and civil unrest, those affected by the ravages of natural disaster. We continue to remember and pray for all persons in their various challenges, praying that the Lord would meet them at the point of their needs. We continue to remember and pray for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster, against the ravages of civil unrest. For all those who are in the various stages of recovery, we pray that Almighty God would grant you their provision and peace. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. Thunder your protection now and ever. We may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence as well as in the presence of Almighty God. I do pray you had a restful night last night and that you are ready to face the day that is ahead. I pray that all of God's blessings will be upon you today. May he grant you more than your hearts can ask or desire according to his grace. I want to remind you of what our broadcast schedule is for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayer at midday, evening prayer at 5.30, Bible study at 7.30 p.m., and then at 9 p.m., we close off with Compline for the day. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are able, and we remind you that you can always find these services online at our Facebook page and our YouTube channel in the event that you miss them. Be on the lookout for the link for the Bible study. It should be up shortly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, Where Charity and Love Prevails. This is Ubi Caritas. Yes? And this is, of course, one of my favorites. It's an a cappella. I do hope you enjoy it as well. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. Where charity and love prevail, where God is ever found, 
brought here together by Christ's love. By love are we thus bound with grateful joy and holy fear. God's charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we are faults confess and let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let's strive among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Be his the glory that we seek. Be ours his holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst dwells God's begotten Son as members of his body joined we are in Christ made one love can exclude no race nor creed if honored be God's name, our family embraces all, whose Father is the same. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus found. We believe in Jesus, no matter what people say to us. We believe that He's our Lord by His resurrection. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open hearts to His resurrection and merciful love. Jesus has risen. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. Put your hands up. If you believe Jesus is the way to seek, leave behind a life of sin. Come on forward, come follow him. We believe in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and endless life. Every day we say to him, here I am, you count on me. We believe that heaven may start from this land if we're open hearts to his resurrection and merciful.